6.2%. The highest inflation has been in 30 years, and there's some serious concerns about this. As inflation goes up, the cost of everything goes up with it. As inflation goes up, there's also concerns about what does that mean for my stock portfolio. In today's video, we're going to talk about how should we invest, how should we plan in light of inflation, and what steps can we take to protect ourselves. Hey everybody, I'm James Canole, founder of Root Financial Partners, and I'm here to teach you what you need to know to create a secure retirement. Inflation is the hot topic for today, and inflation is certainly a concern. We've seen price increases larger than any we've seen in several years, and people are concerned not just what's already happened, but what does that mean going forward? So what we wanna look at is how does inflation impact our portfolio, and what steps can we take to alleviate any potential impact from that? Now, before we go much further, I do wanna make a quick point. There was an article two years ago from the New York Times, and it reported the headline, saying Federal Reserve officials are increasingly worried that inflation is too low and could leave the central bank with less room to maneuver in an economic downturn. Now, I am not denying that inflation is a concern. I'm not denying how much of a detrimental impact it has when inflation spirals out of control. What I am saying is that there's always a crisis that's happening. The crisis now is inflation. The crisis and the concern a couple years ago was deflation and inflation not happening fast enough. So as we're looking at all this, let's take a big step back and understand that these types of events happen and let's be objective and reasonable the way we approach it so we don't make any emotional or knee-jerk reactions. That being said, inflation is here. And people say it's transitory, people say it's not. Whatever it is, prices have gone up and show or look as if they're gonna to continue to do so for a little bit of time. With that, that's the concern for today. The concern last year was COVID and unemployment and elections and general uncertainty. Before that, it was trade wars and tariffs and fears of an economic global slowdown. Before that, it was an endless number of things. So some of the things I wanna talk about today are specific to inflation. And what should we know about this? Some of the things are specific to what we might call the crisis du jour, or what is it in front of us today that presents the risk to our portfolio that the media would have us fretting over 24 seven. So the bottom line is, what do we do with our portfolio in light of this? There's, there's serious concerns that if inflation goes up too significantly, stock returns, bond returns are gonna be hit really hard as they start to fall as inflation rises. Well, with investing, with inflation as with anything, it's not enough to be optimistic or pessimistic about where things are going. In order to make changes to your portfolio to profit from that optimism or pessimism, you need to either be more optimistic than the general consensus of the market, or more pessimistic than the general consensus of the market, and be right. So if you have concerns about inflation, you have to ask yourself, are my concerns with inflation greater than the market as a whole's general concern with inflation? right in line with the general market's concern with inflation or less than the market's general concern with inflation. And I'll use an example to show what I mean. Let's assume it's New Year's Day, 1979. Now, the two years prior to that, the market had negative real returns. So in 1977, the market was down 7.2%. In 1978, the market was up 6.6%, but inflation was at 7.6% for the year, which means the real return was a negative 1%. So what you had is back-to-back -back negative returns in a real sense. And going into 1979, let's assume that you had a crystal ball. You have this crystal ball and it tells you that you're about to see double-digit inflation in two consecutive years for the first time since World War I. So you somehow knew that in the following years, inflation was gonna be 11.3% and 13.5% respectively. So you're coming off two negative years, you know inflation's about to spike for at least two years, what would you as an investor do? Well, most people, if they had that information, would say, I am getting out of the stock market because inflation is not good for the stock market. As inflation rises, the stocks are gonna suffer. I'm just gonna get out and wait for inflation to pass before I get back in. Well, I suspect that many investors would do that. But then what actually happened over the next two years? Well, the S&P 500, over those two years, so from 1979 to 1980, it had a total return of about 57%. So even as inflation was spiking and you had double digit inflation numbers back to back years for the first time in several decades, the S&P 500 rose 50% total over the course of those two years. If you don't just look at the S&P 500, but you look at well, how did small companies do, they increased by 91% total over those two years. 
So if you let your concerns about inflation, inflation that you could have predicted, because remember, you had a crystal ball at this time, the rest of the market didn't. If your concerns about inflation had led you to get out of the market, you would have missed out on very substantial returns. And not just that, but in protecting your money and going to cash, you would have missed out in terms of your real purchasing power because every single year that cash becomes less and less valuable as inflation rises. So what we can see here is even sometimes being able to predict that inflation is going to come in no way helps you to determine your investment policy because it's so unpredictable as to what the stock market will do even in light of serious inflation. If we look at the three years of inflation from the 70s and 80s, so again, the 70s and 80s is, is the worst inflation we've had in, in recent history. 1974, 1979, and 1980 were the worst years of inflation. In 1974, inflation was up 11.1%. It was very high. The stock market that year was down 26.5%. So you can see inflation rose that year and the stock market crashed. 1979, inflation was up even a little bit more. It was up 11.3%. The U.S. stock market was up 18.5%. In 1980, inflation rose to 13.5% and the U.S. stock market was up 32.4%. So in the three worst years of inflation, two out of those three years, the stock market had above average returns and in one of those three years, it had a negative return of 26%. And even in 1974, so the market's down 26.5%, inflation's increasing, you're saying, oh my goodness, what is to come after this? Well, by the end of 1975, you'd broken even meaning you'd recovered from your losses. By the end of 1976, you were up an annualized 7.7% from the beginning of 1974 to 1976. So are there concerns about inflation? Yes, and inflation can have some disastrous impact, especially for people who don't have assets that can appreciate to keep up and outpace inflation. But trying to make investment policy because of what we expect to happen with inflation becomes very challenging when we just look at recent history and how different markets have responded to rising inflation. One of the reasons for this is as investors, we can only think in terms of one variable or two variables or maybe three variables at most that are impacting the stock market. So we see concerns about rising inflation. We say, oh my goodness, there's no way that can be good for the stock market. Let's get out. Well, when you look at the stock market, it is a very complex information processing machine that's looking at variables like inflation, but it's also looking at company earnings. It's also looking at consumer health. It's also looking at rising or falling demand. It's also looking at global trade infrastructure globally. It's also looking at Federal Reserve policy. It's, it's, it's looking at so many different variables that to try to look at one of those, inflation or GDP or unemployment or who's gonna win the next election, and try to make investment policy based on that one variable is to miss out on the hundreds and thousands of other variables that are constantly going in to where the stock market is priced. So this is a challenge for investors, locking in on one thing and thinking that one thing is what's driving returns, when in reality, that one thing is one of many thousands of things that are impacting the price of the stock market on a daily basis, all of which we can't possibly keep up with or compute on a daily basis. So what do we do with this? Is it enough just to throw up our hands and say, do we just give up and not worry about inflation? Well, in some ways maybe, but in other ways certainly not. What you should do is gonna be completely different depending upon your stage and where you are at as an investor in your investment life cycle. If you are investing and have many years to go, the ups and downs caused by inflation or any number of variables, it's really not impactful for you in terms of long-term. In fact, you probably welcome downturns today because it allows you to keep putting money into the market and buying shares of great companies at a reduced cost. If you're retired or about to retire though, you don't look so fondly at those downturns. So the downturns can actually be disastrous to you if you don't take the right steps to mitigate them. So what are those right steps to mitigate them? Number one, how much do you maybe need from your portfolio in the next five to 10 years? So as you look at your financial plan, and let's assume that you're retired. When you're retired, there's gonna be some things like social security or pension or maybe rental income that aren't gonna be subject to inflation. In fact, social security, it's keeping up with inflation to some extent. So if inflation goes up, so does your benefit. It's really the portfolio that's the variable aspect of your income, and you have to ask yourself, how much do I need from my portfolio to support my living expenses over the next five to 10 years? Now, whatever that number is, you probably wanna keep that number in something that's fairly conservative and isn't gonna be impacted by inflation in the short term. You wanna have some stability in your portfolio so that if inflation does cause a stock market to decrease quite a bit, well, you're not gonna pull money from your stocks just now. You're gonna take that money from the conservative or the more stable investments 
giving time for your stocks to recover, knowing that it might take two, three, five plus years for them to do so. But then the rest of your funds, the funds that you might not need in the next five to 10 years. The big concern with that, the big risk with that, isn't what's inflation gonna cause the stock market to do today, it's what's inflation gonna cause living expenses to do 10 years from today, 15 years from today, 20 years from today. What it's gonna do is it's gonna make the cost of eggs and milk and cars and electricity and everything else that we purchase to maintain our lifestyle increase and increase and increase. And if we're too conservative with all of our portfolio in an effort to protect against the ups and downs today, what we're really doing is subjecting ourselves to a tremendous amount of risk over the long term, which is the diminishing of our purchasing power. The dollars that we have today stay stable because they're not subject to the ups and downs of the market, but the purchasing power is gradually decreasing over time. So we need another part of our portfolio that will go up and down because of inflation concerns or because of any number of concerns, but we have enough time until we need those funds that we can ride out some of the ups and downs. And in investing, it's not the bumps along the way that we need to be so concerned about. What we need to be concerned about is what asset do we have that's going to continue to increase in value over time to help offset any of the impact of inflation. Now, people talk about, okay, you buy gold or people talk about you buy commodities. Well, maybe those don't have a strong relationship or they don't have a strong tendency to outperform stocks over time. I prefer owning the greatest companies in the world. You know, if I, if, if I just do a walk out of the office and walk around right now, what happens? Well, I'm wearing an Apple Watch and I have an iPhone. And if I go outside, I see an Amazon truck that's making a delivery. And then I see someone getting into their Ford. And if I walk down the street, there's a Bank of America. And what I realize is these are all companies. And these are all companies that are in business to make a profit. And if inflation goes up, Apple's probably gonna start charging more for this. And if inflation goes up, Ford's probably gonna start charging more for their cars. And if inflation goes up, Chevron's gonna start charging more for the gasoline that they sell. So if they're able to charge more as that happens, and I'm an owner of those companies, and I have a right to their future revenues and profits, there is by default an inflation hedge built in to owning great companies. So we want to own assets. We want to own things that are gonna go up in value over time, even as inflation happens, because the worst thing we can do as investors is to put all of our money into something that's not going to appreciate with inflation. If we become so concerned with the volatility that inflation causes, we lose sight of the bigger risk, which is if we're too conservative, we start losing out to inflation little by little every single year. So as an investor, have an investment policy statement. Understand how much money do I need to have in conservative investments to protect against the short-term impacts of inflation? But then how much do I need to have in long-term growth-oriented investments that will protect against the long-term impacts of inflation? Finding the balance between those two is the key to managing against inflation because the alternative is trying to get in and out of the stock market at all the right times, and most often the people that do that are the people that get burned. For example, if you think the way to combat inflation is to get out of the market at the right times and back in at the right times, just consider this. If you were to invest $1,000 into the S&P 500 at the beginning of 1990, and you let that money run for you until the end of 2020, no extra dollars added, just let that money grow, your portfolio grew to $20,451. So a greater than 20 times increase for just letting your money ride in the greatest companies in the US. Now, if you had done that, but you missed one single day in the S&P 500, and it happened to be the best day across those 30 years, instead of your money growing to $20,451, your money would have only grown to $18,329. Meaning missing one day cost you $2,122, which is over 10% of the final ending balance you otherwise would have had. If you miss just the five best days, instead of your money growing from 1,000 to 20,451, it would have grown from 1,000 to $12,917, meaning you would have had about 40% fewer dollars than you otherwise would have had if you didn't miss just those five best days. And if you miss the 25 best days, Instead of your $1,000 growing to $20,451, it would have only grown to about $4,376. So a full 80% lower than it otherwise would have been. Why do I bring this up? Because oftentimes those best days happen in the midst of maximum uncertainty. So by the time you're watching this, who knows what's happened with inflation? Who knows what's happened with a whole bunch of different things around the world? But the greater the uncertainty, 
the greater the swings in stock prices, both to the downside and to the upside. And if we miss the upside, we miss out on a significant amount of total return over the course of 20, 30 plus years. So as an investor, we want to make sure we can withstand the ups and downs by having that amount that's conservative and not subject to the ups and downs of the market. But we also want to make sure that we're capturing those long-term returns to offset the impact of inflation over time. Thanks for watching. I'm James Canal with Root Financial Partners. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with someone else who you think might find value from it. And if you've not already done so, please make sure to like this video and subscribe for more great content just like this. And if you want more content about how you can create a secure retirement, be sure to check out our podcast, Ready for Retirement. And if you're interested to see how our services help people create their secure retirement, you can check that out at rootfinancialpartners.com.